You're watching AsianCultureVulture.com and we're at BAFTA for the closing gala at the London Asian Film Festival where it's the last night after 10 days of seeing some amazing films and documentaries. We're going to speak to some of the directors, the stars behind the films and many more exciting people. Art Manic joining us now. Where do you feel that Asian films are going? Um, well, films will struggle wherever they're made. You know, the British film industry struggles, the Asian film industry struggles. Uh, festivals like this are, are a way of the diaspora celebrating what people make back home. And it's, it's you know, this will be the London Asian Film Festival. I'm sure there should be, and if there isn't, there should be one in New York, there should be one in Sydney, there should be one in Toronto. There should be one everywhere, really. I mean, in fact, that's, you know, and what festivals do is that they allow people to uh, showcase their products, their hard work, and also hopefully be able to find somebody who will buy it and put it on television or on screens. So they're a good idea. And what do you say to budding actors who do want to do what you are basically doing? Well, diversity is something we call it now. When I started out, they used to call it things like, you know, we hoped that there would be colorblind casting, there'd be non-traditional casting. Stories will be told. If you're an actor and you want to get involved, you know, stories are always there. Uh, they'll always need a new Romeo. They'll always need a new Juliet and they will always need an older bloke to play mum and dad. <laughs> now, where do you see yourself, Art? Um, oh, gosh. I, well, well uh, you know. I am definitely playing granddad now. <laughs> so we have the director, Grinda Chala, and Naughty Boy. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for joining us at the London Asian Film Festival. Yes, I was, came to do the uh, tribute to Onpuri, um, which was very important because I've known Onpuri for a long time. So I was very happy to be able to do a tribute to him. And you obviously had such a you told us such a beautiful story about how your relationship started with him. Yes. And you know to to kind of give him those condolences now. Um, you know, was there a little thought going through your head? What am I saying? What am I doing? You know. Um, uh, no. Uh, I mean, I was. You know, I he I considered him a friend, and we had a long association. And uh, Shah had come to visit me this evening, and I said, I've got to go. And he said, Jal, I'll come with you. <laughs> so we turned it into yeah. a nice night out. And um, to be honest, East is East, one of the most iconic films for me, for my childhood. And I was quite sad, not just tonight, but just generally since his passing as well, because yeah. I never really. So, you know, when you hope you meet someone one day, one or you just bump it, or you'll see their face, yeah. and then it'll be how it feels in real life. So that's sad, but it's such an inspirational event for not just Asians, but for any kind of culture just coming together. There's Indians here, there's Pakistanis, there's Sikhs, you know, there's Gurinda. There's all communities <laughs> here. And what is great that you're here promoting a festival like this, which is encouraging young people yes. to make get into films. Absolutely. I mean, you're one of the few who opened the barriers, but now there is a lot more going on for all of us. Absolutely, there's a lot of films here, a lot of talent. Um, there's a lot of people, okay, bye-bye. That's the caterer. <laughs> she, they catered my wedding as well, oh, really? actually. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Bakshi, Gungeon's Kitchen, <laughs> East London. <laughs> and I love how you're promoting. And I love the fact that volunteers here for the film festival, they're all like trying to be either writers or producers or directors. Yes. It feels like yes. it's, it's a mutually beneficial event. So. Absolutely. Good. So where are we seeing you next, Gorinda? You're off to Australia. Uh, yeah, the film is opening in Australia. So I'm going to Sydney, uh, I'm going to Australia and New Zealand. My films do very well out there, which is great. Um, then we've got the India release, uh, so that'll be a big one. I'm really hoping it gets released in Pakistan, so yes. we're talking about that at the moment as well. And Bangladesh. Um, and then, uh, God, all the other countries. So. How about you? Um, I'm, fin you I'm finishing my next album at the moment. Okay. Um, I did uh, just do a song with Rahat Fateli Khan as well for my album with Emily Sandey, which I can't wait for everyone to hear. And amongst that, there's a few things going on that you don't need to hear about right now. So <laughs> okay. I'm going to go. So I have Sibia Sumar, who is a writer and director. She just made a documentary. And we're going to find out more because it's a very interesting subject. You made it around India and Pakistan, which of course marks 70 years this year. Tell us more about your documentary. Um, Azmaish is actually a film that uh, started as a question about why India and Pakistan are looking to religion for their identity. 
and that exploration took me uh, to places in Pakistan and also took me to India where I met with Kalki and then she and I explored that subject together. So, I, and I think that, you know, when we're looking at India and Pakistan and what's happening there in terms of um, religion becoming a very uh, strong point for, for people to identify themselves with, we also have to look at what's happening to women's rights, we're looking at what's happening to minorities, what's happening to the poor in these countries. And then you also open up and you can see that, you know, there is, whereas in India and Pakistan the idiom is religion to tackle problems, in the West, uh, it's a patriotic uh, nationalism, which you can see in Brexit and Trumpism yeah. in, in the US. So it's a film that's really looking at what's happening in the world today uh, in terms of authoritarianism and growing authoritarianism and the retreat of secular democracy or liberal democracy. It's quite hard and I think a documentary happens in bits and pieces yes. so I've been filming over four years wow. and um, and you know you don't really know what you're going to encounter and how that's going to change your creative journey. We have Shravani Basu who's a writer and a fellow journalist and she's doing the Q&A which is very exciting. Tell us a bit about that. Well, I've seen Sabiha's films. Uh, I loved Kamosh Pani, so I was really excited when I was asked because uh, it'll be great after all these years to sit there and have a chat. And I think her new film is really exciting. Uh, I think it's very important, the ground she's covering. I think it's very relevant today, and uh, I look forward to having a chat with her. It's great to see a lot of women, women involved in such festivals now. Do you feel that the market has changed over the years, especially the, the field that we both work in, you know, and to give opportunities to young Asian women? Well, it's about time. <laughs> Way overdue, I think. And yes, uh, I think we as women, as a writer myself, I'm writing books about India and Britain. And, uh, you know, one of these is being made into a film, which is very exciting. It's called Victoria and Abdul. It's being directed by Stephen Frears. Uh, it has Judy Dench acting as Queen Victoria. Wow. And this was an unknown story. So I'm so I'm delighted that, you know, these stories are now going to come out and be mainstream. And uh, yes, women writing is always a good thing. The cast and the director and the producer are here with me. They won the award for the film Utopia. How do you feel about winning such a prestigious award such as this? Absolutely fantastic, brilliant. It's great for the film um, and it's great uh, just to, to, to be here and, and get an award in, uh, in London, Asian Film Festival. We've picked a few up in India. Right, uh, okay. So this is, this is our first award in the UK. So. It's great. To have a award as a co-production because the co-production is between Iran, Afghanistan and Scotland. So the, 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 the whole award is for everybody this year. That's why we are happy. It uh, encourages us to continue and uh, to do another co-production. And as an actress, Afghan, I'm so glad because uh, Utopia film is my first film. And with that film, I... Uh, I become actress with Utopia Films. I thank uh, Mr. Hassan Nazer to trust me, to have a confidence of me, uh, to have that role, very important as a lead actress. And uh, it encouraged uh, Afghan women to, to become actress, uh, to enter in the film industry. Uh, and uh, uh, hope we will continue to work together. What was it about her that you found that she could play the role? I can tell you very briefly, if I didn't have her, this utopia never finished. Okay. So uh, I think we were lucky to have her and uh, this, this um, uh, film, it just happened because of, uh, you know, uh, internationally people involved and uh, we, we were just lucky to find Malalai as a uh, first-time actress. We have um, Ahmed Jamal who actually released a film for the London Asian Film Festival called Rehem. What made you want to do a film like this? It's a great story. It's uh, Shakespeare's lesser known uh, plays but the story is, uh, you know, it's got drama, it's got, you know, it's all, all, all the elements that Shakespeare has. That was the main reason. But the other reason being that we felt because of 400 years of Shakespeare, this particular play can be transported into another society without any changes and still be relevant to that society and to relevant to other parts of the world. We have Alicia with us right now who was behind those four walls. Um, what an amazing start to your film. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I didn't expect it to be as big as it was when we got here. <laughs> what one thing have you learned in the last 10 days by being a part of this festival? It 
is always to follow your dreams. I meet a lot of people, um, even people came to see my film that I didn't know of, and they came over to me afterwards. They're like, we're amazed that you actually managed to do it. There was a young girl that said to me, do you know, I gave up on my script. I wrote something and I gave up. And I said to her, go back to it. In fact, call me and I'll help you.